Hi there, I'm Sean Delman. In this video, I'll be reviewing Cybersecurity for Dummies by Joseph Steinberg. I'll be looking at the paperback version as well as the audible version, which is narrated by B.J. Harrison. Okay, so to start with the purpose of Cybersecurity for Dummies, the idea is basically to give you a broad overview of cybersecurity, explain about different threats, explain what they are, how they work, and how you can protect yourself from threats, including by taking the right steps before an incident occurs, while an incident is occurring, and after an incident occurs. It also provides really great advice about the kind of attitude that a person needs to take to deal with cybersecurity, including enhancing your security, uh, securing your accounts, having good password hygiene, staying safe from social engineering scams, not oversharing on social media, and these kinds of things. In addition to all of that, it also provides information about careers and certificates that a person could look into, and it provides insights on future technology and emerging technology that may pose cybersecurity threats. There's also quite a bit of focus on Internet of Things and cryptocurrencies and blockchain, as well as artificial intelligence and virtual reality. The author also includes lessons that we can learn from significant, noteworthy cybersecurity breaches that have happened in the past few decades. As far as the audience for this book goes, there's all kinds of different potential audiences, and the author doesn't assume that the reader has any specific sophisticated knowledge. Generally, the author assumes that the reader just has some basic computer know-how, but that they're not an expert or anything like that. Uh, the book is basically for anyone who wants to know more about cybersecurity in general, people who want specific tips, tricks, and directions, people who may be interested in pursuing a career in cybersecurity, and there are all kinds of specific sections for people who may be interested in cybersecurity as an individual or cybersecurity as a business, both big and small. Getting into what I like about Cybersecurity for Dummies, this book does have a lot of great and solid advice, both in terms of technical solutions that a person can put in place, and also the way that a person needs to think so that they can effectively defend themselves against cybersecurity attacks. The author says on page 316 that, people who believe that criminals are after their passwords and PIN numbers are also more likely to better protect these sensitive pieces of data than are people who believe that crooks have, quote, no reason to want their data. End quote. And I think that that is actually really great advice and that the author is totally correct. A person could have all of the best cybersecurity hardware and software in the world, but they wouldn't be safe from attackers if they didn't know how to protect themselves and make smart decisions about how and where to interact with the World Wide Web. So to show you more about what I'm talking about, if you use my below link and visit the Amazon page for this book and then click here where it says look inside, there's all kinds of information that you can get uh, by essentially previewing the book ahead of time. You can take a look at the table of contents here and see parts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you can actually start looking at the specific information that's inside of each part. Uh, what exactly is cybersecurity, getting to know common cyber attacks, etc, etc. So as I mentioned, this book is very comprehensive. There's a lot of information in here, and that's something that I love to see. If you're going to buy a book called Cybersecurity for Dummies, you're definitely going to be expecting a lot of information, and you're going to be expecting that it's going to cover all kinds of areas. This book really does that, and I think that that's a really great thing. And on a somewhat similar note, this book is also really easy to use. As with most dummies books, the sections are really easy to find. They have big pages, big text, big margins, lots of open white spaces on the page, and different kinds of icons that tell you if the author is offering a warning or a tip or suggesting something that you may want to remember later. And if we actually jump back here to the preview version on the Amazon website, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So here's chapter one, what exactly is cybersecurity? You know, lots of white space, big text, big headings, We've got all kinds of lists, little icons that show us different um, things that the author is trying to convey, uh, nice uh, titles for each kind of subsection. So as with most dummies books, this book is actually really easy to use and that's actually a great thing because you may be wanting to use it as a resource. You may be interested in a specific aspect of cybersecurity, so you can just jump into the table of contents and then you can find that section in the book. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this book also provides a lot of really practical examples of cyber attacks that have succeeded over the years and explains what we can learn from these. Uh, some of the attacks are fairly famous and they made the news, but some of them are lesser known, but they're still really important because they illustrate what went wrong and why the cybersecurity uh, failure occurred or why the cyber attack was able to succeed. 
And even though it's a large company or a large corporation, a lot of the things that went wrong go all the way down to an individual person making some kind of a mistake. And we can all learn from those things and alter our behavior so that those things don't happen to us. Also, as with most Dummies books, this book has lots of images and walkthroughs, including step-by-step -step directions on some things. However, in my view, some of the descriptions probably won't age well because they'll be outdated as soon as operating systems change, but what the author can do on that is just produce the new version and then just, you know, swap out the old information of how to do that walkthrough with the information for whatever is the latest technology at the time. And with respect to the Audible version, and I will be discussing more of it in the dislike section, I did really like how I could just walk around and listen to this book. I found the author BJ Harrison really easy to listen to. Uh, he was really clear. I liked his pacing. I think that for the most part, everything was, was read correctly and that it came across that way. But as I'll be discussing, I think that this is the kind of book that is better consumed in a paperback version because there's all kinds of diagrams. Um, there's all kinds of practical information that you're going to be getting from this book that I don't think translate very well to an audible version. However, if that's your only choice, you know, if you're a truck driver or if you're, you know, commuting a lot on the bus or something and you can't read the paperback version, the audible version is here and I think that it was really well done. Okay, so moving to my dislikes about cybersecurity for dummies. My biggest complaint about this book relates to the choices that the author made with respect to which subjects to include. I think that this book includes a few subjects that go way too far beyond what the average person would be looking for. In my view, most people who purchase books from the Four Dummy series are expecting that the book will be fairly practical and have useful information that they can apply right now. And this book definitely provides great in-depth direction on specific things that you can do, but it also kind of goes too far in providing higher level information that probably isn't useful or practical for most people. For example, this book has a very large section on issues that relate to cybersecurity and big business. And although this is an interesting subject, I think that most people aren't worried about CEO fraud and cybersecurity regulations and managing custom systems and looking at what the role of the chief information security officer is. Also, for people that are interested in these subjects, they probably wouldn't be looking for the information in a book called Cybersecurity for Dummies. Similarly, the book has materials that relate to cybersecurity and global politics, including cyber terrorism, international sabotage, and industrial espionage. Again, I think that these are subjects that most people wouldn't expect to find in the For Dummy series, and for the people that do want information on these subjects, they probably wouldn't be looking here. At one point in the book, the author says that he wants to bring, quote, practical cybersecurity knowledge to non-technical people, end quote. But by including these parts, I think that he actually works against his own goal. And at the same time that the author dedicates so many pages on these subjects that I think are impractical for the average person, the author fails to go into detail on some things that I think you would expect. For example, many people are interested in knowing more about how to use a virtual private network, a VPN. The average person wants to know how it works, what it does, and why they should be using one. In this book, the author mentions using a VPN a few times, but he doesn't go into any detail beyond saying that it creates, quote, an encrypted tunnel, end quote, and that it adds, quote, multiple security benefits, end quote, and that, quote, many popular VPN services are available today, end quote. And while these statements may be true, I think that it would have made more sense to discuss using a VPN further and spend less time talking about the high-level subjects that I just mentioned. With respect to the Audible version, as I mentioned, there are lots of pictures and diagrams in the paperback version, and the Audible version doesn't do them justice. For the most part, they aren't described or even referenced at all in the Audible version. And to me, that means that the listener is missing out on a lot of information that's actually supposed to be in the book. And on a somewhat nitpicky note, I actually found quite a few typos in the book and a number of places in the Audible version where the author reads the wrong words. Strangely enough, I actually started noticing this more and more as the book went on. For example, on page 161, the text says, quote, the accessing or transmitting sexually explicit material, end quote. But it should say the accessing or transmitting of sexually explicit materials, end quote. It was missing the word of. At the top of page 171, the text says smaller businesses, but the narrator reads it as similar businesses. On page 176, the text uses the word complexity when it should say complex, but the author uses the correct word in the audible version. In general, I found at least 10 other instances of places where there was either a typo in the book or where the narrator misread something. 
so perhaps the author and narrator will see this video and make those corrections in the future. And on the note of the narrator, I should point out that the narrator, BJ Harrison, is not the same person as the author. And as far as I can tell, he doesn't have any connection or affiliation with the author. The narrator seems to just be a person who was hired to narrate. And in my experience, I generally prefer when the author or someone who works with the author narrates the book because it lets me know that there's that extra level of care and connection with the materials. Finally, with respect to the Audible version, it doesn't include the information on the final pages of the paperback, which is the about the author section, the dedication, and the author's acknowledgements. And to me, these sections actually provide some insight into who the author is and his reasons for producing the book, which I thought were worthwhile. And on a final nitpicky note, I noticed that certain parts of the book were duplicated verbatim. For example, on page 250 under chapter 13, backing up, the testing backup section has three paragraphs that are repeated verbatim on pages 282 and 283, which is chapter 15, restoring from backups, under the testing backup section. Similarly, on page 250, the Conducting Cryptocurrencies Backup section has a paragraph that is repeated verbatim on pages 283 and 284 under the Restoring Cryptocurrencies subsection. This only happened in a few places in the book, but as a consumer, when I'm reading text that is identical to text that I read earlier, it makes me feel that the author may just be fudging it to increase the word count, or that the author was too lazy to redraft the text to make it read as being unique, or that the author was too sloppy to notice that they used the exact same wording twice. And I fully recognize that I could be wrong, and perhaps the author did this intentionally because the wording contained exactly the wording that he wanted to use, so he just said it twice. So to conclude, I think that Cybersecurities for Dummies is a great book to use as a primer to get into the subject of cybersecurity. For people who are total beginners, it touches on all of the important subjects and gives specific instruction with respect to many best techniques and practices. Even for people who are intermediate or advanced users, we can all always improve our cybersecurity position, and I think that this book will provide at least some information that'll help a person do that. For experts and people who are interested in cybersecurity as it relates to global politics and big business, this book even provides information for them. And although I have a few complaints about the book, I think that they're overshadowed by the many ways that this book can be useful to many different kinds of people seeking various forms of information. If you're interested in seeing for yourself and you'd like to pick up a copy, please use my Amazon link below. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for more information about cybersecurity, please check out my other videos, including my one which provides step-by-step -step direction on using a password manager. Thanks again for watching. As always, I'm Sean Dillman.